Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so like he said, my name's Alex DiStefano. I'm a sophomore finance major. And last year, I earned $170,000. Now, that sounds impressive, but I didn't get to keep any of it, so it wasn't that great for me. But I earned it through the Nittany Lion Fund for our investors. And those of you that are not familiar with the Nittany Lion Fund, it's a student-run mutual fund comprised of alumni investments. Right now, we have about $6.5 million of assets under management. I personally manage about $650,000, or about 10% of the fund. So I decided, when I started as a freshman, that I really wanted to pursue my passion in finance. And the Nittany Lion Fund seemed to be the premier organization to do that. So I was fortunate enough to get a spot in the fund, and the very first day, they told me, hey, here's $650,000. We want you to make money on it, but we don't only want you to make money. We want you to make more money than the market does. Great. So, of course, I'm like, yeah, I can do that. And inside, I'm like, no, how? How am I supposed to do that? I have no idea. I'm a freshman, okay? I had no idea what I was doing. But I was so concerned with making a mistake and losing <laughs> over half a million dollars, that I studied the markets. I learned about the companies I was dealing with. I did research projects. I used mentorship to help me learn without actually taking a course in it. And that's how I got that return. So I want you guys to flash back to the first week of your freshman year, and I'm sure you all remember it. You finally, at the end of the week, figure it out where your classes are, who you're going to sit with, who the hotties are, who you want to talk to, who you don't, who you're trying to avoid. And then finally, you think, maybe it's time I actually look at the syllabus that each teacher gave me. And you kind of peruse through the massive papers on your desk, and you notice that 60, 70, sometimes 80% of your overall course grade is coming from tests alone. And you're thinking, why, God, why? How am I going to do this? How am I supposed to, if I'm not a good test taker, how am I going to pass this class, let alone get an A? So that's the problem. And what do students do? They combat this with pulling all-nighters to study for these tests, or they use Adderall that may not be prescribed, or they cheat, or they get study guides from their friends. There's so many issues that, are, that go along with this. So why am I telling you this? What does the Nitty Line Fund have to do with this? Well, I'm talking about project-based learning as the future of learning in higher education. It may seem daunting to try and implement this in a university of our size, but really, when you look at how you can do this, it's very simple, and it comes down to our teaching assistant base. They are so underutilized, and we really should be taking advantage and leveraging them to our, to our um, what's the word I'm looking for? Leveraging them as much as we can, let's go with that. Okay, so you can do this in four steps. First off, start by increasing the amount of TAs we have per class. In a typical classroom, you may have two or three. In large classrooms of 700 plus, you may have seven or eight. That is not sufficient at, by any means. We should be looking at having a ratio of one TA to 25 students or one to 30 students. So in a class of 750, that's about 25 students per TA. Okay, that's step one. Step two is actually assigning those 25 students to one particular TA. This way, they reference one person. These TAs are not berated by emails at every hour of the night asking questions the night before an exam. Step three is having the actual TAs come up with the projects. This is a huge job for the, prof for the professors alone to do, and we ask the TAs, how are we going to make this material the most relevant for the students that have to learn it? That's one of the biggest issues, is that students cannot put relevance to what they're learning. They don't know how to apply it. They just memorize things, and then after the test, it's gone. So you have students, um, so you have the TAs come up with these projects. Now, they can be individual projects, they can be partners, they can be groups. You can do all of them. The number one reason that millennials are fired today, and millennials being our generation, is because they don't know how to effectively work within a team. And that's a failure of our education system. We don't make them work in teams enough, so let's do that. Let's put them in teams. The last step is using those TAs with their respective 25, 30 students and holding recitations once a week, once every month, whatever the class requires. 
And you use those recitations as checkpoints to monitor how the students are progressing. Okay, what have we done so far? What are we going to keep doing? What's the next phase in the project? What can we take out? What can we fix? How can we make it better? That's what you use those recitations for. If we move to project-based learning, we can get back to what education is for. We have become so obsessed with grades, and we have lost the value in education. You hear students coming to college, and they say, I want to graduate with a 4.0, or I want to make dean's list. And that's all fantastic, and I applaud those that do. But no one comes in saying, I want to graduate with a good education. I want to graduate knowing my major inside and out. Now, let me go back. I talked about the fund. That was freshman year. Now it's my sophomore year. I've, been, I've moved up a bit. Um, and this year, I actually took my first finance class. Look at that. I took my first finance class, and guess what I got in it? Not a C, no. I got a B, though. I got a B in the fundamentals of finance. And yet, the year before, I made almost a 30% return on investments. Why? Is it because I don't understand it? No. It's because I'm not that great of a test taker, and I didn't sit there studying the material. But hey, guess what? I can sure apply it and I can use it in real-world situations, and that's how we should be assessing our students. So before I finish, I just want you guys to think a little bit about what the most useful thing that you ever learned was. It could be anything, personal, professional. What is the most useful thing that you ever learned? And now think about how did you learn that? Did you learn it studying for an exam? Or did you learn it by doing it hands-on, through mentorship, through someone showing you, through teaching you that way? Did you learn it through projects? Think about it. Talk about it in your discussion. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful rest of the day.